This is a Twitch clip of the strength stacking chieftain I did. Uh, most people do this with blade vortex. I use cremation because we can scale a bunch of AOE from the strength using an elder mace. And I wanted to see how far this can get pushed. There's definitely some improvements that can be made, but I at least wanted to post some kind of a build guide slash showcase because I think there's more that can be done with this. And I wanted to see if anybody else could find a way to make this even more meme-y. Um, but I'll go over the passives and the, the gear and stuff like that here in a second. I just wanted to show what it looks like in a delve and what it looks like with the massive global AOE even with Herald of Ash. So enjoy. I, I love the I love the huge AOE and the RF. So I'm going to explain the general strength stacking build first, if you've never seen them before. It's pretty straightforward. You just get as much strength as you can from the tree. So we path down here, strength, strength, path over here through strength. Uh, I put a brawn here. You can put a might of the meek here and grab these on the outside if you want. Um, and then we go down to a wavering stance since we're CI, down here for more strength, over here for strength. And then I grabbed a um, DS recovery rate with discipline. Watcher's Eye, and then Might of the Meek right here to buff all of these, and then I grabbed Res up here. If you can get Res elsewhere, you should do that, but um, you can put this into more strength, but if you're having a hard time like I was, then these are fine too. And then Might of the Meek here for more buff strength, Sanctity, and Brawn up here. I grabbed Regen right here. Uh, if you're going... If you're grabbing mana as extra ES and you're scaling that, then you can grab mana right here instead. I just want a little extra regen. Efficient training right here, LE overload and strength. And then efficient training right here for more strength. And then efficient training here for more strength. I think you're starting to see the theme here. Uh, CI and Ghost Reaver are both really important for this build. So that's the passive tree, it's pretty simple. There's a few different ways you can do this. Uh, you can also do it with pretty much any ascendancy. So you can go like Witch pretty easily, you can go uh, Templar pretty easily, and Slayer pretty easily, or uh, Duelist pretty easily too. I just chose Chieftain for the Ascendancies. The Ascendancies that I chose are um, Ramco Sunlight, this one for Strength and Ash. Uh, this one just for the Fire Res, I was having a hard time getting Fire Res, so this made it kind of more comfy, and it made Wise Oak balancing a lot easier. And then uh, the Endurance Charge Generation for our Immortal Call setup for bossing. So that's the skill tree. I'll explain the basics on how the gear works. The two required uniques are Shaper's Touch and Joffrey's. This has been done a thousand times before. A lot of Baron builds do this. So this gives us flat strength. This gives us percent increased strength, or sorry, percent increased ES per strength and uh, flat ES per strength. So with these two up, we're at 15K ES. Take this one off, drop down to 3K. Take this one off, we drop to 4K. So having both of these is required if you're doing strength stacking ES. Um, and then the rest of the year in order of priority is Cyclopean. I have a perfect world one with the 20% increased catalyst attribute modifier on there, the intrinsic catalyst. Auberon's with perfect strength. Uh, Black Suncrest for percent increased strength. Uh, I got a top uh, perfect world strength one, but you might want to grab um, percent increased intelligence too because we have uh, some intelligence problems with all the brawn. So percent increased strength is top, uh, top priority. Int is secondary, if you can grab it, great. If it's too expensive, then I wouldn't worry about it a ton. And then Astramentus for flat. This isn't best in slot, but you can get um, like a rare hunter or shaper one with like implicit strength. Uh, <laughs> implicit strength, you can grab, uh, I'll put DMD on. Um, so this gives us a bunch of flat strength and then the, uh, the tranquility gives us um, percent increased spell damage per percent increased energy shield. So all the strength stacking converts into energy shield, which also uh, provides spell damage at 30% of its value, if that makes sense. Um, and then I crafted a T0 strength, a T0 essence crafted strength ES spirit shield. I got lucky and got res on it too. These are kind of tough to buy. If you're gonna do one of these, you should, uh, you should just craft it. Um, you can also get one with plus one fire, plus one physical skill gems if you wanna do uh, BV. And then the Dune Kubiari gives us a ton of damage. So the second to last mod there, 1% increased damage per eight strength. That gives us, we're at 2,900 strength, I believe. Yeah, 2,910. So we'll do 2,900 divided by eight. That gives us 362% increased generic damage for anything, which is super nice. 
Um, this is what makes the build pretty good. If you want to do like BV with this, it's huge. Um, I did cremation for reasons I'll explain in a second, but um, it is a nice damage buff. And then rings, just go priority, stat priority on these are T0, T0 or T1 strength. And then resistances, this is the only source of resistances that we really get, so maximize these. And then ES if you can get it, if not, not a huge deal. Uh, and then uh, that's it for gear. So most people do this setup with BV. This is a really common thing to do. I kind of wanted to meme it out a little bit. So what I did was I swapped over to two of these rare one-handed maces. So the two mods on here that matter are 3% increased AOE per 50 strength and T1 strength. So I got two of those. As you can see at the bottom there, strength and AOE per strength. So what that does is converts all the strength to AOE. So the Blade Vortex, it didn't scale the AOE very well, but with these on, we're at 2850 effectively. So 2850 divided by 50 gives us 57 units, and then we're getting 3% from each 50, so that's times 6, gives us 342% increased AOE. After Skill Gems, it's about 450. So that's a ton of AOE. It doesn't, again, it doesn't scale well with Blade Vortex. This is what it looks like with BV on. This is with 300% increased AOE. We'll go over here. Get my intensify stacks off. So it's, I mean, it's pretty big. It's bigger than normal, but if we open swap over, it really doesn't look much different between big AOE and not big AOE. So that's why I swapped off of it. Um, we did go cremation though for a couple of reasons, which I will explain. The AOE is the biggest one, obviously, but first I'll explain how cremation works. So the reason I went with this is because it shotguns projectiles. So what it does is you have a corpse, you cast a little volcano on it, orange be the volcano, and then it shoots out projectiles. So the projectiles scale from AOE in two ways. The first way is with more AOE, they shoot farther away from the volcano, which is bad, right? We want them to all shotgun in the middle here, but it also scales the explosion. So with increased AOE on, it shoots out way over here, and then it, the damage comes from a secondary projectile, which also scales the AOE. So with increased AOE on, we get a bunch of overlapping like this. And I think it's like super, super good for mob clearing, but the single target on it's kind of meh. Uh, that's why we swap over to the Dune Kubiar in the Spirit Shield for more ES and more damage. But with this on for mob clearing, they shoot really far away and they overlap a ton because the explosions are so big. So this is what it looks like in the hideout have cremation back on so we cast the desecrate and all these little circles these little red splashes that you're seeing are all damaged so all, every time they overlap that mob's getting hit with each one of the projectiles on there and then for reference this is what it looks like with uh the dune kubiary setup on aoe is not bad definitely not speed clear with how delayed the damage is from the initial like the time between the initial cast and the damage hitting is kind of slow so that's why i went cremation also I'll do this in paint too. The uh, so this is just my thinking on it, but I'm not sure this is perfect. So you have your flat damage, and then you have your percent increased damage, which for us is huge, right? And then you have your more multipliers, which are always kind of the same from like ascendancies and whatever other sources of more you can get, uh, skill gem stuff like that. So with our build, we have a ton of percent increased damage. So I think it's like close to a thousand percent increase, but the flat damage is kind of meh. So cremation has a super high flat damage roll. The, the reason I think the reason this is, is because it's kind of hard to like apply all of the hits consistently because they shoot out in random directions. So unless you're casting it right on top of an enemy, it's kind of tough to get all the balls to hit, right? All the projectiles. So with the AOE, we kind of bypass that and make it a lot easier to hit almost all the projectiles or at least a lot more of them. So that's why I went cremation and then um, for the AOE clear. And then the single target on it is really not bad either because we're always leeching. So you can cast it. It lasts for eight seconds base duration. And then as long as these are hitting, you're leeching ES. So if you're in a boss fight, you can like run around and do stuff and not get hit while you're leeching. And the recovery rate on this is insane. I'll show a clip of a, of a metamorph at the end, but like we, we can regen through. As long as we don't get one shot for 15K ES, we usually don't die between regen and leech. So the last thing I'll do is gem slots. Um, we have cremation. Intensify for more AOE, Unleash for mapping, LE Focus, Iron Will. This is the most important one. This converts our, uh, this gets us that like 800% increased damage or whatever it was, 500% increased damage. Uh, this applies the strength bonus to melee fizz over to spells. And then inc uh, Awaken increased AOE. So for, I use these two for mapping. When I'm doing single target, I pop in Control Destruction and Conk Effect, like that. 
And then the helmet, the Black Sun Crest, has a plus one to gems. So I did Discipline, Anger, and Herald of Ashen there on an Enlighten. And then I have Immortal Call and Casting Damage Taken, uh, Purifying Flame for bossing. So I'll just cast this down to make Consecrated Ground. With the uh, AoE on, it's actually a pretty big AoE, so we can even kite within the Consecrated Ground. See, it goes all the way up there and then down there. And then the gloves, I have Desecrate, Flame Dash, Faster Casting, Arcane Surge. The Faster Casting to the Desecrate just makes it easier for mapping. It's kind of a clunky, it's kind of a clunky playstyle. It takes some time to get used to for sure. It's not like super intuitive. You have to press two buttons instead of one, so it's, it's kind of not as fun to play until you get the hang of it. And then our Valve of Righteous Fire, Ellie Focus, and Increased AoE. This is for buffing for boss fights. We get more spell damage from the Val RF, plus the damage itself on this isn't bad. Um, and then last thing is flasks, so Wise Oak for pen. This one, Dying Sun, is, is a pretty big priority. We get two more projectiles, which is huge for damage. Uh, it applies the same amount of damage faster with more projectiles and better area clear. And then Quicksilver, I went with Regen for this. You can do any other mod for the Cinder Swallow, but I just went with Regen because it's more tanky. And then I went Phasing with a Bleed for Bleed Immune and not get hit all the time. So I think that's it. Oh, one more thing, kind of a cheeky thing with Chieftain. So if right here it says 35% increased uh, or 35 chance to gain an endurance charge when you use a fire skill. So if we're CI, we have one life, we can't actually pop while RF, or we can't actually pop RF. So if you have regular RF right here and you spam it, it has a 0.3 second cooldown. You can see on the, on the right side of the tooltip right there. So we spam this, and then if you notice top left, my endurance charges are going up. And then when we get hit with a mortal call, then those go away, we get damage reduction, and you go back to spamming this. Between this and cremation, um we're always casting fire skills if it's this is especially handy if you're using blade vortex with this because blade vortex isn't a fire skill so you can spam rf and get endurance charges which is kind of cheeky and it's super handy for boss fights i don't do it during mapping because it's kind of a, a pain to always be smashing e or whatever you have bound to but it is nice for boss fights always having endurance charge generation going on so i think that's it um, if you have any questions about this or something I missed, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. I'm going to be doing this on stream for the next couple days, so that'll be linked in the description. Uh, if you have any ways I can improve this for more meme value, I'd love to hear it. Um, any better skills than cremation? I'm going to try like a vortex cold to fire and see how that works. Um, but feel free to let me know or ask questions. I'll be as helpful as I can. But thanks for watching. Bye.